ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. My name is Nadine Sands, and this of course is Learn How to Edit Stuff. Today we're gonna be talking about having a second monitor and why I think that having your second monitor be as versatile as possible is important when you're editing or doing graphic design or anything in the media space. Now I'm assuming most of you that have a second monitor, it's just a monitor. It just sits right next to your normal monitor and it doesn't have any other functionality besides just being a second screen, which is totally fine. I'm not gonna judge you for it. That person used to be me. But recently this company Gammon reached out to me and they said, hey, can we send you our 15.6 inch pen display for you to use and for you to review? We just want you to check it out. And usually when I get emails like that, I'm pretty skeptical at first. I don't really know what the thing is gonna be that they wanna send me, but I did some research on it and it looks pretty cool. It's a pen display that you can write on and it also serves as a secondary monitor for your computer. And this is the functionality I didn't know was important until I actually started using it. So not only is it my second computer monitor, I can also use it in Photoshop and in After Effects to do hand-drawn animations and just kind of doodle around and it's really super cool. So I'm not gonna bore you with an unboxing video. You guys can go and look for that yourself. That's not why we're here. Just know that in the box, it comes with everything that you need to get started. So the way I have it set up right now is right to the right of my primary monitor and I'm really loving this setup. It's got a little lever on the back to adjust the angle of the screen to your liking so you can lay it down flat when you're drawing and you can also prop it more upright when you're using it as your secondary monitor. On the left side, it's got 10 customizable shortcut keys for Windows and Mac, so you can map it to be whatever you want. And on the left side of the bezel, it's got all the monitor controls that you're normally used to having on any sort of monitor, so you can adjust the color and the brightness and the contrast and all that fun stuff. Of course, it comes with a pen and you charge the pen via the power port in the back and it also has two customizable buttons on the pen that you can go and map yourself. And with the digital pen comes the pen holder, which is great, it just sits right on your desk and inside there's a bunch of little stylus in there. So if you run one down, you got plenty of backups. It also comes with this nifty two finger glove thing. So you can run your hand over the monitor and not gunk it up with your skin oils, which is pretty cool. So for those of you that are into graphic design or illustration or digital art or any of that stuff, I'm sure you've heard of the Wacom or Wacom tablet. I don't know how you pronounce the name, but I'm sure you've heard of it. And that thing will run you anywhere between five and $600 and up. The Gammon PD1560 is $359. So it's half the price of the Wacom Wacom equivalent and it works just as well. So for less than half the price and having the ability to use it as a second computer monitor, you can't really go wrong. Now, if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I'm not one to do product endorsements or product reviews very often, but Gammon sent me this thing and I was pretty skeptical at first. And as I started using it more and more, I really started to see the benefit of having a second monitor with like multi functions in it, instead of just having a screen that just sits there and you can't really do anything with it. All right, so now I'm gonna move my camera setup a little bit, show you guys how this thing works in Photoshop. And if you like it, if you're into it, something that you think that you would enjoy, Amazon link is in the video description below. I don't benefit from this at all. Just go read a little bit more about it. Check out more information. I'm barely gonna scratch the surface at all the things that this thing does, but the Amazon Amazon link will provide all the information that you need and let's jump into Photoshop. All right, guys, now we are in front of the tablet. This mic setup and camera setup isn't the best. I'll admit that, but this is this is what we're dealing with here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is come down here and open up Photoshop. And as you guys see, if you've ever used one of these before, the mouse will follow the pen movement just like any other tablet. And it works very well. The tracking works very well and it is very smooth. So now we're gonna open up Photoshop here. We're gonna create a new 1920 by 1080 document. And then we are jumping in. Now, the first thing I'm gonna recommend you guys do if you have a tablet like this, or if this is something that you're considering purchasing or whatever and working in Photoshop is turn on the pressure sensitivity for your brush. So with my brush selected over here, I'm going to come up and just hit this little target with the pen in it. And if you guys don't have this, you'll need to turn on Windows Ink. And I believe Mac, it will automatically do it. But on Windows, you have to turn on Windows Ink. And then this little icon will be available to you in Photoshop. And basically what that's going to do is if I very lightly draw on this, see how delicate and thin the line is. And as I push harder and harder and harder, the brush will get thicker and thicker and thicker. And this is just a nice way to kind of bring some realism into your drawings and actually have that pressure sensitivity and this thing works really, really well. Now I've kind of scribbled all over here and it's really messy. And this is the point where we're gonna move on to our custom buttons and how they function and how I have mine mapped. So the first thing uh, and the most used button I have is actually undo, which is my bottom most button down here. So if I just click this a couple times, it will undo my last couple keystrokes, et cetera, et cetera. The one right up from that is the zoom tool. So if I wanted to zoom in and out, I just click that button and then it works just the same. And then from here, the one right above that is my hand tool. So I can zoom in and kind of move around various parts of my images very easily. And the one right above that is actually redo. So if I wanted to put some of those things back, um, I can do that very easily. And these are my most used custom function buttons right here on the left-hand side in the bottom corner here. And the ones right above that 
if I go back to my brush, uh, the top one is to make the brush smaller and the bottom one is to make the brush bigger. So I can just tap that a couple times, make a big brush, tap it a couple times on the top end and make a smaller brush. Going up to my top set of four right here, the very bottom most button is to get to the brush. The one right above that is to zoom in on its own, just zoom in. Uh, I like to hit that one a couple times, but usually I'll use the actual zoom magnifying glass, which I find a little bit easier. The one right above that is delete, and the one right above that is new layer. So if I wanted to create a couple new layers, I just hit that button a couple times. And then if I wanted to delete these layers, I can just hit the delete key, and now I am back to square one. On the pen itself, the button closest to the screen is my eraser. So I can come in here and I can just erase things very quickly. And if I wanted to get to my brush settings, that's the other button on the pen, which is the one closest to me. I can just hit that, which is a right click. And now I can kind of come in here and customize my brushes and the softening and all that stuff right from here. And it also functions as a right click on any layer that you decide to choose or anything in Photoshop in general. It's just a normal right click. So we'll undo all the way back to the beginning so I have a blank canvas and I'm just gonna start using this thing so you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about and how this thing works. You guys are here to see my amazing art skills. So let's jump in and start doing that. I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna come over to my pen tool and I'm just gonna draw a circle. Wow. <laughs> Actually, it was a pretty good circle right off the bat. I'm not going to lie. All right, let's zoom in here. And now we have all of the same functionality that we do inside of Photoshop. I'll grab my paint bucket tool and I will kind of make this blue. Maybe I'll do that. Come back over to my brush tool, make it black. And I'm going to draw an arrow going into this ball. Really riveting stuff. And we'll come down here. And since I have the pressure sensitivity on, I can draw really hard lines at the end and then kind of draw lighter lines like that and it's going to give me that nice like kind of opacity fall off and nice delicate lines that we were talking about before instead of super harsh lines and i think that that's really really cool you can also turn on opacity sensitivity on your layers by activating this icon here and what that will do is if i push really hard it'll be full opacity and as i lighten up it'll start to get lower and lower and lower opacity uh, for actual artists and graphic designers this is probably a really useful tool for me not so much because i'm not an artist as you can tell by this ball with an arrow going through it but we're not done we're gonna make this a guy. Check this out. Boom, dead guy. Maybe a little mouth and a little tongue action there. Undo, maybe we'll redo that. And see having these custom function buttons on the side is actually very useful. So you never have to keep going back to your keyboard because if you're basically trying to work and then go back to the keyboard over and over again, that's gonna get really annoying. So basically what you wanna do is set yourself up for success and customize all of your buttons over here on the side so you don't have to keep jumping back to the keyboard every single time. That can get really annoying. I'm gonna delete this guy right here and I'm gonna make a text bubble that will appear in this video. My God, check this out. And now this little text bubble that I just did right here is my own custom hand-drawn animation. I don't have to go in and on Google and find one that somebody's already done and then get rid of the background and do all this stuff. No, I can just make my own. So I can just make my own little custom text bubble just like that. Maybe we'll redraw the circle here. There you go, perfect. And now this text message bubble will appear in the video, my God. So this is a really, really cool thing. And it also, again, serves as my second monitor. So when I'm not actively using it in pen mode, it just sits right next to my computer display and I can use it just like I would a second monitor. When I'm editing videos in Premiere, I can tile out all of my videos and everything right on this monitor. I full screen YouTube videos on this while I'm working. It serves as a monitor, but it also serves as this touch screen kind of pen functionality thing, which is is really cool. I'm glad that they sent this to me and I'm, I'm glad that I can be talking to you guys about this today because if you are in the market for a second monitor, uh, for the price point and what this thing actually does, you can't really beat it. Plus it has this sick two finger glove, which like, come on, I mean, value add right there. This is this is dope. All right, guys, that's it. The Galmon PD 1560 15.6 inch pen display. If you guys are in the market for a second monitor or maybe you already have one and you want to upgrade to something with a little more functionality, you want to get into that digital art graphic design design illustrator type thing, this is probably a good option for you. And at the price of $359, it definitely comes in well below the competitors that are out there. And it also doubles as a second monitor for your computer so you can use it for other things when you're not actively drawing on it. Again, Amazon link is in the video description below. Full disclaimer, I do not benefit from this at all. They just sent it to me and they were like, hey, check it out, let us know what you think. This is what I think. It's probably a good pickup if you're trying to get into it. Well, that about does it today for me, guys. Hopefully you learned something 
new today? Interesting. It's not normally what we do here at Learn How to Edit Stuff, but you know, we're trying new things. It's 2019. It's the year of trying new things. I don't know. Hey, if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel and also check out the last video that you missed. We do them here weekly at Learn How to Edit Stuff. Make sure you leave a comment in the comment section below. Give the video a thumbs up if you don't mind. And if you want to learn something, tweet at me at Naughty and Sands. I'll try to do a video tutorial just for you. Subscribe, check out the last video, and I will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>